الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا الله يا رب يا رب السلام تضويا Hey, what is up, guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. A lot of interesting things to talk about today. I've uh, got a, a new movie review. My family and I went to see that new alien film that just came out. It's called Arrival. So we'll be talking about that uh, toward the end of the video. But first, we have to talk about a very strange occurrence that just happened above New Zealand. So as you just saw in this video, and if you guys haven't heard about this yet, there was an earthquake in New Zealand yesterday. And before this earthquake happened, which then, according to the uploader, reoccurred during the peak of the earthquake, we have these strange lights that appeared in the sky. Um, some people are calling them earthquake lights, but we will talk more about that in a minute. So the footage you just saw, recorded above Wellington, New Zealand, posted to Instagram by a man who um, was quite literally shaken by what he was seeing. Uh, a number of people commented on this video when it was posted from across New Zealand who also witnessed these strange lights, which according to most people lasted from anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. Now the source who posted this on Instagram uh, captioned it saying, This is the sky during the earthquake in Wellington. Hope everyone is safe. Another person is reported as saying, and I quote, The lights happened on the peak of the shaking and were of colors mainly green, blue, and white. But a bit of yellow and other colors were there too. Now, this is a topic that we've actually rarely spoken about here on the channel, and, and that is of earthquake lights. Now, according to scientists and researchers who have looked into this, and that is the appearance of these strange lights high up in the sky, uh, just before, during, or after earthquakes have taken place, and this has happened across the world. Um, an Australian scientist by the name of Carl Kruzlinicki said that earthquake lights are a genuine phenomenon. However, there is no scientific consensus on the causes of these lights at this point. Now, as I said, these lights have occurred during various earthquakes in the past. We have reports of them happening during the 1975 Kalapana earthquake, where we had lights that were reported to have taken shape similar to those of auroras, uh, with a white and bluish hue. But we've also had reports where these lights have taken sort of a ball shape, a, a yellow ball-shaped formation. And, and it really is, it's honestly making the jobs of these scientists uh, a lot harder. Who are trying to figure out where these lights are coming from because it would be one thing if the lights all had a uniform typical shape uh, predictable and something that they could study and say okay here's these lights we know what they look like we know what colors they are but they don't these lights um, they occur in a various array of shapes sizes colors um, even heights in the sky Sometimes they're closer to the ground, and sometimes they're much, much higher. We're talking miles up in the sky. There are countless hypotheses and models. All of them get so complicated and convoluted to the point where it's just laughable. They have no idea what's causing these lights, and that is why they're such a mystery. It's one of the most uh, eerie, unexplained mysteries uh, of our Earth, uh, where we have scientists who are willing to confirm that the phenomenon is real, but have no idea what's causing them. And I've been showing you different pictures here of these so-called earthquake lights. But uh, it's very strange. There is no consistency between these various reports of these lights happening. So it makes you wonder what's causing the lights. Are these lights in fact causing the earthquakes? Um, is there a supernatural or an extraterrestrial? reason behind these lights. It wouldn't be the first time that we've seen UFOs and other strange occurrences happen during worldwide cataclysms, earthquakes, storms, rocket launches, ballistic missile rocket launches, you name it. It seems like any time there's something that could potentially endanger the Earth or the people on it, we've had many mysterious visitations. So I'll leave it up to you guys, and I guess my question here is, have any of you experienced these earthquake lights? Have you had your own sighting or your own opinion? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Now, speaking of strange things coming from the sky, many of you have probably seen this news story of a, a mysterious unknown object that fell from the sky and slammed into a mine, a jade mine, in the Asian country of Myanmar, which is formerly known as Burma. So we're showing you some images from that here, where we had this large cylindrical object. Um, and, and I'll tell you why this story is strange, because it's not like, I mean, th this is pretty much ruled out as any kind of really UFO or alien, you know, type of machinery. Some people are saying that this is a part of a Chinese space rocket. But what's strange here is we have this large object. It fell from the sky, landed in a mine, uh, and from what we can see, it, it, it's believed to be an engine of some sort. And, and it looks to have some sort of Chinese writing on it. The strange thing of it is that no one's claiming it. And they... They checked around and tried to verify if this was part of a plane crash, a piece of equipment that had broken off of a plane, any, any type of aircraft. Um, they checked with the military. No. No plane has gone missing. No machinery off of a plane has gone missing. No parts of a plane have been gone missing or broken off. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a really strange occurrence. Um, you know, I've heard stories in the past of, you know, plane wreckage, maybe an engine. It's kind of like from that movie Donnie Darko, if you guys have seen it, where this plane engine crashes uh, through someone's house, and no one claims it. It belongs to an unidentified aircraft that seems to, you know, belong to no one, almost as if the aircraft didn't exist in the first place. Uh, so... Very strange. You're, you're seeing all the uh, images and, and Facebook and Twitter posts of this here. Um, and we're still trying to figure out where it came from. Now, usually they come out you know, fairly quickly to identify something like this. Some are saying it could be part of a Chinese rocket that was launched recently. You know, part of the uh, rocket were jettisoned during the launch, and this may be part of that. And uh, they're currently looking at it, and what we know so far is that all they're saying is that it could be a rocket booster from a space mission. Uh, but again, very odd that they're not just coming out and saying, yes, this was part of our space mission. This is a rocket booster. So very strange. I'll put the link to the news story down in the video description, and uh, you guys can check it out. Now, I want to show you guys a very anomalous finding on the planet Mars. Now, you're seeing the original image here, and as always, I'll put the link down below. And I believe that we have found some concrete evidence here. And when I say concrete, I mean it. And it links directly to this anomalous finding here. It would seem that we have found what look like parts of a artificial brick wall or stone wall. The things that look like blocks. So the area of interest what I want you guys to check out is right here where we're circling. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Now, these objects are just off to the right being obstructed by this rock wall here. But I want you to look at them, and I'm going to put a little overlay on top of these to show you exactly what we're talking about. Look at these sharp, right-edged, sharp-edged structures that literally look like they're a part of a cinder block wall. You're seeing that overlay here just to give you an idea. And we haven't messed with this image. We've done nothing. And we have spoken about the finding of some very strange structures on Mars in the past. We firmly believe that Mars was like Earth at one time. Could have been a war, could have been some sort of calamity or cataclysm that destroyed the planet, leaving pieces of ancient ruins, structures, vehicles, what have you, strewn all across the surface. And what we're looking at here very well could be part of one of these block stone structures. We found monoliths on Mars. We were talking about those in a recent video, these large rectangular structures that have been found on Mars, but not only on Mars, but also one of the moons of Mars called Phobos, where we have found these large rectangular stone-looking structures. So it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility that that is what we're looking at here, looking at pieces of one of these stone structures. So you're seeing a zoomed-in version here. And we have two objects. We have the bigger assortment of blocks here that, again, you look at it side by side to something like a brick wall. looks very similar. And then we have laying next to it what look like two more of these cinder blocks connected together. Perfect, sharp, rectangular shape to them. I mean, it looks identical to what you would see if you 
um, look at some of the rubble in the Middle East where you have these concrete and cinder block walls that have been broken apart. They look exactly like this. So definitely wanted to show you guys this. Another thing to note is how these rocks, you know, as we're calling them, these stones, look nothing like any of the other surroundings. They don't. They look nothing like anything surrounding them. Look at the entire image. Even the color is different of these rocks compared to all these other orange tan sand colored rocks these rocks are more of a dark gray a charcoal color and they do not match the surroundings so that's another indicator that we have something here it's very out of place uh, so again check out the link down in the video description let me know what you guys think now before we get to the end of the video where we talk about the uh, new film that I went and saw last night. I just want to show you guys one more thing. Um, you guys let me know what you think about this. Uh, a user online posted a video of this strange finding um, down at the bottom of the ocean off of the coast of Australia. And he found this on Google Earth of this 20 something mile long cylindrical object sitting at the bottom of the ocean. You're seeing that here. And I will put the coordinates to this down below. You can check it out on Google Earth. And this really does stand out to me. Um, some are saying that this is a crash. Uh, we have a large, and I mean large, this thing's like 25 miles across. That almost looks to have skidded across the seafloor, coming to a stop, displacing a lot of the soil and the sand in its wake. And so I definitely saw this, and I thought, well, I... I I better post it because we have some experience in this in this topic because if you remember and if you follow the channel I think it was about five months ago six months ago or so we posted another video where we had also found uh, another one of these circular objects that had left this sort of zigzagging trail on the ocean floor so the I mean you could obviously tell the object had moved and been moving for quite some time and that object was again miles in diameter and a perfect circle perfect sphere you know saucer shape to it it wasn't as big as this one but you could definitely see the trail behind it and this thing had moved miles along the seafloor carving out this trail and so now we have an even larger circular object off the coast of Australia and it just again sticks out like a sore thumb we've talked recently in videos about our oceans and about how there have been a lot of mysterious happenings Largely, our oceans are uncharted. We have no idea what's down there. We have never explored them. Um, we have no idea. We, we have an alien world on this planet. Forget about space. And we have witnessed and talked to you guys about countless reports of UFOs being seen coming to and from the depths of the sea. And now we're starting to find these large circular objects sitting at the bottom of the ocean, some of them with large trails behind them. So these things are mobile. These things aren't just sitting there. A lot of them have trails. And now we have this very large 20-mile diameter object sitting off the coast of Australia. So is this something natural? Is it a base? Is it some sort of object that, again, is moving across the floor? Is it some sort of crash site? let me know what you guys think I'll post the coordinates down below uh, so a lot of strange findings in our skies in our oceans on other planets and now as many of you have probably seen Hollywood has finally uh, been tapping more and more into the topic of aliens as I've said that the, this topic is no longer really on the fringe I mean it still is for a lot of people but it is becoming more mainstream people in the mainstream are starting to take it a little bit more seriously and so we're getting more serious type movies versus just the Independence Day, you know, alien war type films. Uh, so uh, I took uh, my family to the movie theater last night. Uh, before the movie started, we played some arcade games. Here's a, here's a pick where I was actually killing some aliens uh, on an Area 51 game. And uh, yeah, I'm actually quite the gunslinger, if you didn't know. Took out a ton of aliens, had fun, uh, got into the theater... And if you don't know, Arrival, which just came out, is this film about these giant black egg-shaped UFOs, 12 of them, that appear all over the world. And so each of these different countries that have their own egg-shaped UFO are studying them and trying to figure out what the aliens want. What are they doing there? And at the bottom of each one of these UFOs, there's a door 
that opens up every 18 hours. So the scientists and the language experts can go up into the UFO and try to talk to the aliens. Now I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but uh, they basically go up there. Each country is trying to figure out and learn the language of the alien inhabitants, trying to figure out the purpose of these landings um, if they're trying to instigate war. And, you know, it's really a deep, deep movie. It's not your, you know, your Independence Day action thriller. It's very subtle, um, very uh, dramatic, I guess, slow burning, but keeps you on the edge of your seat. And it's really, um, it's really how you would think it would go. Should we ever be visited? And should we ever come into contact with vehicles that suddenly show up on our doorstep? And it kind of goes through the motions. Uh, where you have the military on one side taking one approach, you have scientists wanting to take another approach, language experts wanting to take a third approach, and you have all of these conflicting viewpoints as to what to do, how to handle the situation, whether to go into the UFO and try to learn and meet them, or whether to just blow the thing sky high and start a war. Uh, so it's a very slow-burning, deep movie. Um, I definitely think it's worth seeing. I thought it was very well done. The uh, graphical work was awesome. The cinematography was great. The, the music was great. But again, depending on who you are, you may like it, you may not. I thought it was very interesting and really a beautiful film. And, you know, it's, a, it's an alien film that is very different from the sort of fear-mongering alien invasion type stuff that we usually get from Hollywood. So I say definitely go and check it out. And, you know, especially if you're new to this topic, and hell, even if you're a long-time subscriber of this topic, go and see it. If you've ever wanted to see, you know, what possibly would happen if we were to ever to have a mass visitation, then this movie is definitely for you. So check it out. It's called Arrival. It's out everywhere now. Um, I really should be paid for advertising for all of these films, uh, but no, I love it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about everything else we've spoken about today. I've got a lot of stuff coming, a lot of new footage that I'm reviewing as we speak. So stick around with the channel. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter where I constantly post stuff, updates, uh, ETAs for new videos. And uh, I will see you guys all back very, very soon. All right, so thanks for watching. Hit that like button on your way out, and I'll see you all in just a bit.